Hello, my name is Stephen Smith. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to this video where we will be discussing OnPay's payroll and how to sync OnPay with QuickBooks Online. This is one video in a series where I demo, review, and add commentary on the various sync capabilities between the major payroll providers, such as ADP, Gusto, OnPay, and QuickBooks, with QuickBooks Online. We have a simple agenda. We're gonna go into OnPay and we're gonna look at what the app looks like, what those settings and features are, such as the timing of the sync. Do we wanna sync in summary or detail? How does the mapping work? And we're gonna go over a few more of the features such as classes and departments. I'll provide tips and commentary, all with the overview of how this works in QBO. Uh, how the journal entries will match, how to reconcile the activity in QBO to make sure we are maintaining good and proper data, and most specifically, what those journal entries look like. What we'll do now is go into the product and we'll look and see a little bit about the user interface of what OnPay looks like. And here we are. This is the OnPay QuickBooks Online app. It's accessible by going to company and then the app directory. And there'll be a whole bunch of different apps that, that do synchronize, such as 401ks, compliance, workers comp, we're going to accounting and QuickBooks Online. Now in this video, we're not going to review the dashboard or the workers or the payroll reports, filings, or any of the features on payroll that is not in scope. We're also not going to discuss the initial handshake that happens when you set up QuickBooks Online with with, uh, with OnPay or any app. That is a very standard process where you go, you authorize with QBO to talk to a third-party application, and then you can sync the chart of accounts and everything like that. That has all been done. That will not be reviewed. However, what we will talk about are some of the features and the settings that you have to be aware of. Let's start with the first connection setting, sync automatically. So do we want to set this to sync automatically, yes or no. This simply means if after you run a payroll, do you want these transactions to flow seamlessly into your QBO file, yes or no? I'm a big, I'm, I'd say yes, it, just let it flow in and kind of set it and forget it. If it's no, you'll have to do it manually. So while we're looking at the sync and why we're looking at yes, no, the other thing to be aware of is what if you want to re-push something or if you need to, while you're setting things up, if you need to troubleshoot and do it over again, you can look at a history of your past pay runs and pay syncs by go, clicking on this button up here that says pay run, sync pay runs. So here you'll see a list of all your successful in past pay runs. And if you need to send them again, poof, you can hit send them again. Now, when you do hit send again, three things to keep in mind. One, if you have changed any of your settings over here, such as summary, detail, and uh, mapping exercise, which we're going to go over, that will all happen. Two, it will push it in again, push in all three journal entries or all two journal entries all over again. It won't just do one or two. It will do all of them. And three, if you've already synced them before, it will not delete or overwrite the existing journal entries in QBO. So you have to be sure to go in and delete those. Tip, I would delete them first before syncing again to avoid confusion in knowing which one is the right one and which one is the wrong one. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is the sync style, the summary or detail, two choices, summary or detail. I have a graphic that's going to help us kind of go over the differences between summary and detail. In short, the summary is a journal entry that is company wide. For detail, it's each individual employee. So if you've got multiple employees, that could be multiple multiple journal entries. At a minimum, it would be three with one employee. The summary just pushes two entries. One, what we're gonna call the direct deposit, 
and two, the tax sweep. And the direct de deposit, abbreviated DD sweep, and tax swap, T tax swap. And when OnPay drafts the cash from your bank, it literally has DDS as a DD sweep and a TS for tax sweep built into the bank text that comes from the bank in the bank feed. So what does that journal entry look like? So for gross, for the first entry on a summary, you would debit gross wages. This is your expense for all the employees. Remember the entire company or the entire firm. Then it would credit just the payroll liabilities associated with those wages. And finally, the next credit would be the cash that's going to come out of the bank account. And this would again be titled DD sweep or DDS in the bank feed. The second entry will then remove the payroll liability, the employee's payroll for the employee taxes. It will then debit the employer taxes. And finally, it will credit the tax sweep, the cash account with a tax sweep. So those are the two entries that would come in. Uh, and there would be no individual employee records or anything like that. Uh, for the employee, the first, depending on how many employees, and this works for both direct deposits and checks, you would have a series of journal entries all for the employees. One, the first line would be a debit to their gross wages. The second is a credit for the employee's taxes, which is a payroll liability, which is we're crediting a liability on our books. And the Next credit, the third line, is a credit to a payroll clearing account, most likely a payroll liability account as well. Uh, and you would separate the payroll liability and payroll clearing, probably just to, to keep things organized. But we'll go over that in the mapping section as well. The next entry that we're going to see is a payroll, the this tax sweep entry, where the cash is going to come out of your bank account. This is the taxes coming out, but then we're going to debit the payroll liability account. The third entry is what we're calling the sweep, whereas the payroll, the net amount of all of the employees is going to be coming out from the bank account via the DD sweep entry that's going to be coming from OnPay, and that will relieve the payroll clearing account. Go into QuickBooks Online so we can see a little bit about how this, how this works. Okay, so here we are in OnPay, and for because summary is, is easier, we're going to just start with summary. And now we're going to get into the, the mapping of how we want to allocate our journal entries specifically. Now there's four major areas of journal entries. There's going to be the wages or the payroll expense. There's going to be wages, which is probably under a payroll expense. There's payroll taxes which is also under a payroll expense. These are expenses. Then we'll also have the liability, which is there's the taxes liability, and then there's a clearing account. So the clearing account is probably just a in out. Both the payroll liability and the clearing account should always reconcile back to zero. Now, there's a whole lot more detail that you could possibly have, and that's why there's a lot of mapping options here. So for instance, if you have a number of pay types, um, or if you want to allocate bonuses versus commissions, tips, overtime, fringe benefits, holiday, PTO, all of these things, depending on your level of complexity in your chart of accounts, this is where you have the option to get very, very granular. Uh, the same can be applied to loans such as uh, if there's a reimbursement or an employee loan, anything like that, this would be able to go here. If there is nothing, well, then it's very easy to uh, just allocate these to wherever that wherever you need them. You can also use bulk actions because if they are all going to one account, you can categorize them all very easy by just saying, okay, I want all these to go to payroll expense. And then if you need to, you can update them individually if you'd like. Um, you'll notice that in this particular sample file that I have, 
we don't really have any loans, reimbursements, or do owner draws. So I don't mind that it's pointing to a payroll expense. Uh, I don't need granularity over fringe benefits versus holiday versus overtime pay. Again, all payroll expenses is, is sufficient. Now, if I wanted a little bit of, a little bit more granularity, I would say, okay, I don't want to go to payroll expense. I want to go to payroll expense wages, and boom, now it can go all to the sub account, payroll account wages. Here's another thing, imputed. This is again something that's not as you know not rel not necessarily relevant to my sample file or to most files, but if I needed to, I can actually get control over all of these. I have put them all to the payroll clearing account. Now taxes is a little bit different. So payroll taxes, everyone's going to have that. And in this particular file, we have payroll taxes as a sub account of payroll expense, just so we can distinguish between taxes and wages. And this is where I've uh, allocated that. Do I need to know the difference between state and federal? No, I don't. So in my mind, it's just all payroll taxes. Uh, withholding, however, is different. Withholdings are employee expenses, so these are not something that we, we, we use. In this instance, we're pointing to a payroll clearing option. However, if you have a complex payroll, or if you would like to distinguish between your wages going in and out and your payroll taxes going in and out, and reconcile that, it might be a little bit easier to create a payroll liability just to help differentiate it and locations in a little bit. But first, I'd like to show you what this does in QuickBooks. Here we are in QuickBooks, and here is the first journal entry. Now, this is a detailed journal entry. Recall our journal entry and for detail is gross wages, less employee taxes, less uh, to the payroll clearing account. So here are our gross wages, which is going to a payroll expense account. Here are the employee taxes, which are being withheld. And then there are two clearing accounts, two clearing transactions. One is going to be for the taxes, and one is going to be for the wages, the net wages. There's no cash credit in this transaction because this is a detailed transaction. The next entry that would come over from OnPay using the detailed method is what we call the DD sweep entry. And if we actually look at the activity that comes from the bank, it actually has DDS, direct deposit sweep from OnPay Inc. This is the bank text that comes through the bank. This journal entry is going to debit or reverse the payroll clearing account that was from the sweep. And it is going to credit the actual bank account that's going to be used with this particular pay run. Now here is the third and final entry that comes in. This is the tax sweep entry. And this is the entry that's going to debit or reverse a payroll clearing. And again, this can be a payroll liabilities account if you prefer, but payroll clearing or payroll liability gets debited. And then the cash transaction is a credit for the full amount of the taxes that would be coming out. Again, if we look at the activity that comes in from the bank on the bank text feed, it will cite on pay and it will say TS for tax sweep. So there is the journal entries that would push into QBO. It's key that these things match. See how we have a match here? We want our deposit, direct deposit sweep, and we want our tax sweeps to match. So going back to our our visual here, two choices, summary versus detail. My feedback, I like the detail. I think it's better to put the detail in unless there are some privacy issues if you don't want individual specific information in there. Why? Well, let's look at the next slide. The next slide is in the memo. Uh, if you are using the summary, you'll get what's a memo that's pre-populated, automatically populated from OnPay that looks like this. It'll say the payroll, the run, and the checks. If you're using the detail, it will have names in there. It will have an, uh, names, employees, run, and it'll have the, the date as well. So it will have more individual information if 
And if that is private, and if that is not something you want in your QuickBooks file, then you would automatically have to use summary. Now, let's talk about another feature that OnPay has given us. This is classes and locations. This is available down at the bottom of the, the page where we set all of our mapping. And we have departments and locations. Now they're using the word departments, but departments is going to equal classes in QBO. So we have department and class. Now we also, they also have another feature here for locations. Locations will correspond to the location feature in QuickBooks. If you do not have class or locations turned on, you wouldn't see these and they wouldn't be relevant. So you wouldn't even have to, to worry about them. Uh, you can have one without the other. However, I have noticed that it is a all or nothing. There is no way to allocate a class to individual employees versus other employees. Uh, there is no way to show what location certain employees are versus another location. So that's a little bit of a limitation that I've seen that I'd like to see a, a little bit of improvement on. I was a little bit optimistic. There is a feature. And if we go to company and we go to my company and we go down to company preferences and we select this setting here, use pay types on GL. And then there's a no or a yes. I currently have it yes. Uh, if we go to no, when we go back, we'll see there's a lot less choices on the pay types. But specifically, this gives it a little bit more granularity. So we'll no. And then we'll go back to our integrations. And you'll notice there's fewer here now. Like before there was you know 50, I think. Now there's down to like 9, 12, 3, 4, 4. So there's a little, that, that does tout more granularity on some of the items that are being taken out. However, it does not help us with the class and location by employee feature. I have a visual on my deck here, the classes and locations. So it's all or one class or location. So it's, it's, it's all or nothing. It's either one, you want everything in a class or you want, don't want any of the payroll in a class. And then there is the department expense mapping. There is that feature, but that's just in for additional granularity not for helping with classes or features. All right, so let's do a review. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have your settings. There's really two or three decisions to make. Do you want it to sync automatically or do you want it to do every time? Do you wanna do it in detail or do you wanna do it in sum summary? Next, you wanna mind your mapping. Do you wanna use payroll liabilities and payroll clearing? Or do you wanna use a bunch of different payroll liabilities? How granular do you want to get with your payroll expenses, wages, fringe benefits, etc.? cetera? Uh, next is the job and department details important to you. Remember, it's all or nothing. Finally, you want to make sure those direct deposit and those tax sweep journal entries are going to match to your bank feeds and QBO. This also means you want to look at your payroll liabilities and your payroll clearing. You want to make sure those stay reconciled. And finally, uh, my last tip is because it does not actually push the on pay fees into QBO, I would create a rule. So I hope this, uh, I hope this video was, was helpful. This was on pay payroll and how to sync on pay with QuickBooks Online. I can be reached at quickencoach.com or sundialvfo.com. Hope this was helpful. Thank you.